Hi everyone, I have another abstract algebra theorem to prove for you, and this one is a bit of a doozy, so there's a lot of moving parts with this one, um, but I hope you enjoy it and can follow along. So this one says, take any element A uh, whose order is N in your group, so remember that this just means A to the N power is equal to the identity, and take an integer that's greater than zero, call it K. This theorem says that the group generated by a to the k is equal to the group generated by a to the greatest common divisor of n and k, and also the order of a to the k is equal to n divided by the GCD of n and k. Okay, so it's kind of just hard to understand exactly what the theorem states, let alone prove it, but hopefully if we go through this slowly enough, we'll figure it all out. So I'm going to start with the first statement, and I'm going to show that these two sets are equal, the group generated by a to the k and the group generated by the a to the gcd of n and k. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do it through double inclusion. Basically, I'm going to show that this set is contained in the other one, and the other one is contained in the first one. If you show that two sets are contained within each other, they must be equal. And just to simplify my notation a little bit, I'm um, the GCD throughout this video of N and K, I'm just gonna call that D. And I'm gonna use the fact that uh, since D divides N and D divides K by definition of the greatest common divisor, that means that K is just some I don't know, we'll say, I maybe mean, I won't use Q, um, we'll just say K is some mm, F multiple of D. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show that A to the K is contained in A to the GCD of N and K. So let's just take any arbitrary power of a to the k. Let's say a to the k to the j, <laughs> right? Because this set a to the k is all the powers of a to the k. So this is just one power of a to the k, right? So that this thing is contained in a to the k. My marker is dying a little bit. Hold on, gotta grab another marker real quick. Sorry about that. Okay, so a to the k to the j <laughs> is contained in a to the k. But I know that a to the k is equal to a to the f times d, right? Because k equals f times d. And if I just rearrange this using rules for exponents, exponents, this is a to the d to the f times j. But what is this thing? Well, this is just some power of a to the d, which means that this element is contained in the set a to the gcd of n and k, right? Or actually, if I'll just be consistent with my notation, this is contained within a to the d. So I showed that a power of a to the k is in the set generated by a to the d, or in other words, a to the k is contained within a to the d. So that's the first way of inclusion. Now I'm going to do it the other way. So I'm going to keep my GCD notation. So let's just take any old power of a to the d. I'll say a to the d to the h, because that's contained within the set a to the d. Well, if I use a fact of the greatest common divisor, it's a well-known theorem that the greatest common divisor can be written as a linear combination of the two things it divides. So the greatest common divisor is some s multiple of n plus some t multiple of k, where s and t 
are integers. This is just a well-known theorem that I'm going to pull from number theory or wherever it comes from. So that a to the d to the h is equal to, these markers really aren't working for me, a to the sn plus tk to the h. And if I rearrange this using rules for exponents, this is a, yeah, I might have to switch markers again. Let's see, Let's try that other one I was using. This is a to the n, even worse. Wow. How about blue? See how this does. This is much better. a to the n to the sh times a to the k to the th. Lots of letters going on here, but all I did was I used rules for exponents. Now a to the n, I know what that is, right? That's e, because remember that a to the n is e, the identity. I know, all you need is another letter, right? a to the n is e, the identity, if the order of a is n. So this is just e to the sh times a to the k times t, uh, uh, no, to the exponent of th. Well, the identity to any exponent is just the identity. So this is just a to the k to the th. But what is this thing? This is just a power of a to the k. So this is contained within the set a to the k. So what did I do? I took an arbitrary power of d, a to the d that is, and showed it was an a to the k, which means that a to the d, that set is contained within the set generated by a to the k. So I've got inclusion going both ways on this, and I've shown that these two sets are indeed equal. Okay, so that was this first part. Now I gotta prove the second part, which I erased. And I'll write it back up here. Uh, that second part, maybe I'll write it over here, said that the order of a to the k is equal to n divided by d, or n divided by the GCD of n and k. So how am I gonna do this? Well, I wanna show that n over d is the order of a to the k. So I'm gonna start by taking a to the k and raising it to the n over d. Well, if I just use rules for exponents again, this is just a to the n to the k over d, but a to the n is the identity element. So that's e to the k over d, but the identity element to any power is just the identity element, so I get the identity element. So this says that if I take a to the k and raise it to the n over d power, I get the identity element. So you might think that automatically I get what I wanted, which is the order of a to k is n over d. But all that says, all this statement says, is that the order of a to the k is at least less than n over d. That's all I know. Because maybe there was something smaller that I could have taken a to the k to to get the identity element. So I have to do kind of a tricky thing here. I'm going to consider a to the d. And I'm going to take a to the d and raise it to the n over d power. Well, clearly from rules of exponents, this is just a to the n, and I know that a to the n is e, the identity. That means that the order of a to the d is less than or equal to n over d. Let's consider i, which is greater than zero, and less than n over d, which means the same thing as 
d times i is less than n. And I'm going to take a to the d and raise it to the i power, which, which using rules for exponents means a to the d times i. Now since d times i is less than n, and n is the smallest power of a that gives me the identity, this is not the identity. Which means the order of a to the d is not less than or equal to d. It is in fact equal to n over d. Because i was just smaller than n over d, anything smaller, and n over d did give us the identity. Okay, I'm almost ready for the last line now. Let's consider the order of a to the k. By a previous theorem, the order of a to the k is equal to the order of the set, or rather the group, generated by a to the k. But by the first part of this theorem, I proved that the set a to the k is equal to the set a to the d. So this is equal to the order of the group generated by a to the d. But the order of the group generated by a to the d, that's equal to the order of a to the d. But I just found that the order of a to the d, right here, is n over d. And I call d the greatest common divisor of n and k, which means that a to the k, hopefully you can see it there, I wrote it a little low. The order of a to k is n divided by the GCD of n and k, which is what we wanted to prove. Okay, that was very long and lengthy and probably hard to follow and confusing. So please watch it again. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, this is a really important theorem, comes up in a lot of questions and such. Um, and it's a real good one, <laughs> at least I think so. All right, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and have an awesome day.